Hello friends, so I'm here at my new front garden bed, which I've filled out quite a bit since I cut it out. And let me just take a little bit of a backed up view. So I did more of a little swoop instead of um, having it so stark. I just edged it out a little bit more to make it a little bit more of a circle. And I'm not done yet, but I have put in quite a bit of plants. So the first one is, of course, this lilac tree on standard. And you can see it's blooming right now. It just smells so delicious. So I'm hoping that'll really fill in and be nice and fragrant here. And of course, I've got three lavender along the front because along the sidewalk is a very tough, dry, rocky, not very good soil. And I think lavender will do really well there. So we're about mid-afternoon, so the tree is shading it mostly now, but it gets hit by pretty hot sun for the morning and most of the day. Um, I've popped in some lilies, which I had in kind of a pot not the biggest fan of lilies and I don't remember what color these are but I threw those in there around the base of the lilac tree and I also have some rose campion which a fellow gardener shared with me so I've got this one this one this one a little drift of rose campion and I split some of my yarrow, which I had growing kind of crazy everywhere, and I popped it on this edge here, which is the driveway of our neighbor, because dry uh, yarrow seems to be like a very, very tough plant, and that's a very, very tough spot. Um, you know, I think it'll be okay there. It's very drought tolerant, very hardy, and I think it can take that tough, tough spot there. Right here I have a hydrangea, a Miss Sayori, and I was a little bit concerned about it, but you know it is leafing out and it has these beautiful, beautiful colors of leaves. See that? That dark foliage? It has like burgundy and green. Look at that. So pretty. And I've also had some penstemon babies, my glam girl penstemon in the backyard has actually thrown out some little babies so I transplanted them here. I've popped one over here, one over here, just like a little bit throughout. They get nice and tall so I think that'll look really nice and when they grow in they should add a fair bit of color. Depends to me like full sun. And so the last thing I was here I was thinking like in this corner I would put a Helleborus Ice and Roses Red, which I have right here. Just took it out of the pot, and you can see how root bound it is. It was actually really hard to get out of the pot. So look at this. Just wanted to show you how bad it was. Look at that. Totally root bound, just circling. This dirt is like rock hard. And basically it was drying out like the water was not taking so I had to like water it constantly and it's still super super dry in here like the water is just on the top so this Helleborus it's called Ice and Roses Red and you can see the blooms here so I think that's quite pretty but the main reason I'm putting it is that for this like evergreen type foliage it's like a really nice contrast to what I have because I'm gonna have like the, t the tall spikes of the lilies and the penstemon so I thought it'd be nice to have something a little bit different. And my Boscobel Bare Root Rose looks like it's doing pretty good. It's got some dieback on the branches there that I have to cut back. But it's leafing out, so that's great. And once I'm done, I'm going to be just putting some compost over top as mulch. And I might sheet mulch it or I might just put the compost right on top. I haven't decided, just because I have so many plants in here. I'm afraid that if I sheet mulch it, I might accidentally cover up some plants. So that's the plan. Let's get this Helleborus. Um, I'm gonna try to score it with my pruners just to like cut up the root memory and hopefully that will help 
get it established. Hi, so yes, I've now kind of roughed up the roots quite a bit on this Helleborus. I just watched um, Caleb from Wise Guy on his channel and he just planted a bunch of Helleborus and he said that they are actually good for dry shade, which I think this spot will be dry shade. And he said that once they're established, they're pretty good. So I'm just gonna make sure to really water them in well this season and hopefully they'll get established. But you can see I was pretty brutal and I think I had to be because it was really dry. So it's been quite a bit, roughed up quite a bit. You can see I actually cut off big chunks of these roots, but um, yeah, water just wasn't getting down there. So I didn't have much choice. So let's get it in its new spot. All right, so we have our Helleborus planted here. I cut off a couple of the leaves just to highlight the flowers a little bit more. I think it's gonna do really well here. And it's a nice size for kind of the back of this flower bed or the side, kind of the rear of it, because this Helleborus is actually pretty big. And I can't stop putting plants in this bed. So I have found some self-seeded Cosmos that um, were just in a random flower bed and these self-seed prolifically. I think I only planted seeds like one time and then after that they've just come back and um, just popped up all over which is fine. I love them. They're beautiful and they're a great annual to have. So they're a bit tall but you know what I think I have enough room in this bed especially here and uh, just to pop a few in here. Um, and these Cosmos go all the way till October. Like I've had them going in October. So I think they'll do really nicely. So let's pop those in as well. I hope I'm not overcrowding this bed, but time will tell. All right, so I've got all my plants in. I don't think I can fit any more in here. Probably overcrowded them. Um, but yeah, I think it'll be full of blooms. I'm super excited to see how this does. Now the last touch is putting mulch in. To be honest, I debated putting compost as mulch, but I think a lot of these things don't like rich soil. So yeah, I think I'll just use regular hardwood mulch, cedar mulch. And hopefully this hydrangea won't be overshadowed by the Helleborus, but I think the Helleborus blooms don't last into the summer when the hydrangea is blooming. So I think it'll be okay, but time will tell. So it's the next day and we've got this garden now buttoned up. So if you take a closer look, you can see I actually ended up putting some compost around the rose and the hydrangea and that's it. And then I put the mulch over top. So I didn't compost with mulch. I just use a regular cedar bark mulch in a dark color and I think it really looks nice. It sets off the plants really nicely. And I didn't sheet mulch, so there's no cardboard under there. Sorry, just waiting for those cars to go by. So the reason I didn't sheet mulch is because I've got so many plants in this garden bed, I probably overplanted. I'm a cereal overplanter. So I feel like the plant's gonna take up so much room and so we'll see how it goes this year it's a new garden bed and i want to just kind of test it out to see how, like if it gets a lot of weeds or not um, if the mulch stays in place and maybe if it doesn't work out and there's too many weeds i will sheet mulch next year when i mulch it again but um, i tried to cut the edge really deep and one thing i learned i don't know if everybody knows this but when you cut the edge you're not supposed to have the mulch going up to the level of the grass. So you want that edge to be bare. Because I used to put uh, mulch right all the way to the edge and even with the grass, but that encourages the grass to go in. So that's something I learned, is that you want that nice clean edge. And hopefully we can maintain that edge looking nice and sharp like that. Ultimately, I do want to kind of expand this garden bed up to this tree, but that is a lot of work because there's a lot of roots from that tree. And it is a beautiful tree. It's a little leaf linden. So it has beautiful flowers. You can see it lit up by the sun in the late evening here. 
Isn't that pretty? But when it flowers, it is the most amazing scent, little leaf linden. And it's just on our property here, I think. It's, if you can see that there. So it would be nice to kind of have, have it go up here, the garden bed. But for now, this is a start. And here is just another view of the garden bed. So this is a well-trodden sidewalk here, especially in the evening. So I kind of did a favor to everyone, I think, by putting this lilac tree, which smells really beautiful. So when people walk by, hopefully they'll get to enjoy that scent. And the other reason I put a garden bed here is because first the grass was really poor, it's very patchy, there's grubs, so I think grass was just a waste, but also dogs. People's dogs are always peeing and uh, defecating in that corner there and uh, yeah, not cleaning it up. So I'm hoping that people will respect this garden bed a little bit more and maybe, hopefully, the plants will survive any kind of dog urine. And other thing I wanted to show you is I've just have so many more blooms on this clematis. It is a Guernsey cream clematis. And you can see how pretty that is growing up the trunk of the tree. So very first right now with like the five blooms, I'm gonna feed it and hopefully I can keep this one alive and keep it growing because I think it's um, very eye-catching there. And slowly swinging around across the driveway if we walk, I wanted to show you another specimen. This bed is full of weeds, so excuse that, but I did have planted one of these lilac trees here, and I planted it well before I planted the other one, so it's more established, not very much more, but it has been in the ground longer, and you can see just how covered in blooms it is. It smells amazing. And I'm gonna trim out this one top and a branch after it's done blooming, but you can see like how many blooms it has. It's stunning, but it's really the scent. The scent is amazing. And because it is got, it's on a standard, it's very, very thin, the trunk. So I do have it kind of staked, but I have, I'm very bad at staking things. So it's kind of a makeshift, makeshift stake. But I wanted to show you my other clematis, which I planted here just last year, and this was you know, a very, very small plant when I put it, but I thought the color would look great with this lilac. Look at that color. Isn't that pretty? It's got more blooms. I'm just happy it survived, but the color, that wine color, Merlot, it's beautiful. And I'm trying to remember um, what kind of clematis it was. I have a feeling it was either one of the Polish ones or it was Niobe, perhaps. This is why I'm making these videos, because I can never remember those types of things. So one of the reasons I'm making these is so I can look back and when I plant, I can remember the names by looking back at the videos and see the progress, of course. So let's now go to the back. Before we head to the backyard, the front of the house had all these daffodils here. The foliage is slowly dying back and I wanted to show you this creeping phlox because I just love how it kind of just spills over the edge there. I had actually put three of these plants, so one on this side, one in the middle, and one over here, but actually the middle one's doing the best. The one over here is doing a little bit okay, and then the one in the corner is not doing well at all. I think it gets the least amount of sun, but um, I might just keep the middle one. I don't know. I haven't decided. It blooms for a short period in the spring, and then it just like a green, a green mat at the other times. So I don't know, but um, I wanted to show you that. And since we're looking at all these lavender colors, might as well show you here. This is all lavender. It is doing great. It is, I believe, Munstead English lavender, and it has got so much new growth and buds. It is crazy. I trimmed it back and it's doing great, huge. So that's a, I'm waiting for that show. And then this is a bloomerang lilac. So this one is supposed to be a repeat bloomer, but look at that. Like when I planted it, it was just like barely making the railing. And now it is just insanely big, much bigger than I thought it would be. So I think it is crowding out my plants that I've put down here. So yeah, you can barely see it, but there is a pe peony right there, which 
I might have to move. I think I will have to move. And then there's a Bleeding Heart White Alba, which I think will do okay in that spot. I kind of like it in that corner. And then here are my Glowmaster Alliums. Isn't it so funny how this one has the ball and then it has like a little sprig or a little shoot on the top of the ball with another ball, like a bud of some sort. So it's like almost looks like it's going to be a double bloom there. Isn't that interesting? You know, like they have that new um, pufferfish hydrangea, which has like a shoot off the top of the panicle bloom. This is like a globe master, but it has like a shoot off the top. So that'll be interesting to see what happens with that. And I see two of those there. So I thought at the time I was putting them in a good spot. But to be honest, they just blend really too well with this lilac. So they just kind of disappear and you don't even notice them. And I think I might move them for that reason. I thought they would bloom more in the summer rather than the spring, but they appear to be putting on a show. So we'll see how long they last. But it uh, might be a good idea just to not to let them get lost back there in the glory of this gorgeous, gorgeous lilac.